Thank you very much. Okay, so I'm at Cy Gosling. I work for a company called Unruly. Okay, Unruly is the trusted video marketplace. We use emotional data to distribute videos, awesome videos, to brand safe uh, premium sites at scale. We're a video di distribution company, all right? And when we do that, we know that emotional data matters. If a brand, we, we take a video, let's have a look at what we do. This is, before we talk about the future of advertising, which is what my project's about, let's look at what Unruly does today. Take a video from, let's say it's Peroni, all right? Play it to 500 people alongside three or four other ads so they don't know which one they're being tested on, and we get them to do two things. Score it, write down what you thought of it. That's conscious, okay, so that's, uh, voluntary information. And we also, while they're watching it, we see what, how they're emotionally, how they're, we use their webcams. They know we're doing this, it's all, uh, all above board. We use their webcams to, and to see what they think of the film, how they're responding to the film. Ads that get a good high emotional score, whatever that emotion is that you wanted to score, sell 23% more product. Don't ask me how they find that out, but that's apparently what happens. So it's, you know, if you watch a video and you laugh at it, that's involuntary. You just laugh. When you think, I'm gonna put this on my Facebook wall, that's voluntary, it's considered. So you wanna get the combination of the two. Once you know out of that 500, who's loving it, we have this line at Unready. We don't make the videos. I did, as you heard, I've got 25 years of making TV ads experience, and so I've always come from content creation. We're now in, I'm now in distribution, if you like. What we know is we don't make the ads at Unready, but we make them famous. Okay, because if you reach the people who love the film the most, they're more likely to share it and pass it on. They're more likely to buy the product. Okay? When you know out of the 500, who are the 50 people that are responding best? You ask the question, who are those 50? And you create custom audiences for who those audiences are. But we also have popular audiences. This might be mover data, okay? Unruly is owned by News Corp. And we ha News Corp globally sells more property than anyone else. And when someone's buying a house, they're 70%, 78% more likely to, more susceptible to advertising. When you buy a new home, you want to change your coffee, change your car, wear different clothes. It's a good bunch of people to advertise to. That's just one of many off-the-shelf audiences that we send video to. So that's what we do. It's worth knowing what we do before we talk about what I think we're going to do. And that's what home is all about. As a futurist, my, chil my children hate that job title, but it means making predictions based on current trends. So there's a lot of people at Unruly who are doing what we just saw. I don't do that. I've built a home, which looks like this, okay? And in that home, it's like my little playpen. And I have a fellow futurist called Elena Cochero, and we look at the latest tech trends. We understand how they're going to disrupt our business and how they're gonna disrupt the business of our clients. When I first got asked, I started on in December 2016, and I was asked by Sue, uh, Sarah Woods, the CEO of uh, Unruly, she said, I want you to build the future home for Unruly in our new Whitechapel premises just down the road. Do come and have a look. And I said, what headset do you want people to look at this thing in? Because I was creating VR at the time. And she said, oh, sorry, I haven't explained myself. I actually want you to build a 2,000 square foot apartment in our new headquarters, set in the year 2020, a fully connected, cognitive, voice-activated, AI-driven home. I was like, sign me up, what a job. <laughs> Didn't have a clue, honestly, what the story was going to be, but now, and there's someone, Ray in the audience, my friend here, who was here yesterday, and hopefully you'll testify it's not a bad tour, right? He's, not, he's nodding, all right? We've had 3,000 visitors come to see this space since we launched it. That's 300, across 300 brands and agencies. And in it, we talk about what I call the ambient era of advertising. Thank you, Richard, for your great presentation, by the way. And thank you for the image of Don Draper. That was the traditional era of advertising. We all know print, radio, TV. We went digital in 2000 when we went online. We're now entering what I'm calling the ambient era of advertising. Who likes Brian Eno's ambient music? Music for airports, You've got to listen to it. It's so good, Music for Airports is a beautiful piece. He, he says of it, uh, if you listen to it to t for 10 to 12 minutes and stopped it, you wouldn't be able to hum any of it back. It's very discordant, but it's beautiful. You don't really listen to it, but when, it's, when you turn it off, you know it's not there. Same with this painting by Mark Surridge, which is in the home. It's amb ambient art, it's not a landscape, it's not a portrait, it's a bit more Pollock, if you like. If you took that painting off the wall, the whole place would feel differently. 
The connected home is going to be the most powerful canvas for advertising we've ever seen. But it's our home. And we talked about emotional data. You've got to get this right. And as a father of three, I'm very uh, much into that. No one gets into my home unless I want them to. Okay? So the ambient era is this new ecosystem of screens, machines, devices upon which brands can share stories with consumers in their home. But how do you do that? So let's have a look. Why have we built it? Why, have, why did Sarah ask me to build the future home when we're a video distribution company that targets people with data, emotional data, but also data from three sources, desktop, laptop, mobile? Why have we built it? Three words. First one, data. Boring slide. Essentially, it says, we are doubling the amount of data we produce every two years. Back in 2013, there were 4.4 zettabytes of data in the digital universe, increasing to 44 by 2020. Data's going through the roof, and the connected home's going to drive it there. Voice, the next word. That's another thing. This year, the voice market is worth $2 billion. That's not just... That's the, amount of money, that's the amount of money people are spending on Amazon Alexas, Google Homes, HomePods, Siri devices, but it's also the amount of money people spend when they say, add shampoo to basket. Boring stats, ready? 10% of the UK owns a speaker, 16% of America. Half the people who have one have already bought using voice. Of the 16% of people in America that own a voice speaker, 36% of people buy using voice regularly. And of the 10% in the UK, 16% buy regularly. Voice is on the rise. It's going to be $40 billion market by 2022, according to TechCrunch. So we've had data, we've had voice, we're now on IoT. Back in 2013, 10 billion things were attached to the internet. And by 2020, that's going to increase to 30 billion. I think that's wrong. That's quite a lot of stuff. I think it's going to be more like 50 billion. So many things getting connected to the web. More data, more voice, more IoT. That's why. The question really is, if we use data from three things to distribute video, what are we going to do with data from your fridge, from your oven, from your scales, from your mirror, from your toothbrush? I personally believe that we're going to distribute video, sound messages, holograms into your mirrors, products into your basket. That's, and so one of the things we're looking at with home is... How is this going to change our business? And let's disrupt ourselves from within. And that's what my job is. What's changing? It's going to disrupt us. Should have said that earlier. What's changing? Storytelling. It used to be one-way storytelling by my Coca-Cola. The brand was in charge. They gave you a 30-second spot. You bought the Coca-Cola or you didn't. One way. And it was passive. And it was observed. Well, not him yet. Now it's active and it's immersive. It's story sharing, not storytelling. And you're in charge. Consumer is king. The things that are changing it are voice, computer vision, AI, and AR. You could add VR and MR. I've been working with VR and MR for five years, made some of the first ever VR experiences for Google Cardboard and blah, blah, blah. VR and AR and MR aren't quite ready yet for domestic use, but they will be soon. But AR is killing it all of a sudden. We'll look at these in a second. So it's story sharing and it's two-way. In fact, Google, call it, say if you're going to have an ambient era strategy, you have to make sure you have want to know and want to buy moments in your strategy. You can't just have want to buy. You need want to know and want to buy. And I think I'm adding the phrase want to explore, and that's coming through AR. So let's look at this just as an example. Want to know, want to explore, want to buy. Micro moments in your strategy. So Voice, want to know. Alexa, what bike did Chris Froome use to win the Tour de France for the fourth time last year? And it will tell me he used the Pinarello Dogma F10. Alexa, voice, want to know. Find me the best deal on that bike. The best deal is £5,000 on eBay. Want to explore. Can you send a hologram of the bike to my phone for me to explore? And a life-size bike will appear in my living room when I can explore it in the most minute detail. We're going to look at IKEA furniture doing that, just that in a second. Once I've explored it, gesture, AR, touch, add to basket, or voice, add to basket, want to buy. I'm in charge. Make, if you're a brand, you need to make sure you're part on that journey. You're part of the conversation. So let's start looking through each of those four trends with, with the first one on the list, voice. I normally have two hours to do this presentation. I've got to do it in 15. So 
is at the moment there's no ads on Alexa. Did you want to take a still picture? Go for it. All right. Well, ad age. Right. There aren't ads on Alexa at the moment. It's not a radio. It's not a broadcaster. It's a vessel for discovery. It's a search engine. But Procter and Gamble and Clorox are already in conversation, reportedly, with Amazon, according to a report on the 3rd of January this year, where they're asking, would brands pay higher placement if user searches for a product such as shampoo? So if you say add shampoo to basket, might you hear a message saying, would you like that to be head and shoulders, two for one deal, or whatever? Okay. If there's going to be a voice message there, I'd like Unreally to be the company that puts it there. But in the meantime, there isn't. Now, we heard, so heard someone talking about natural language processing earlier. There was a stage, and I'm going to try to never work with technology children or animals, but I'm going to do the technology one. Um, people a little while ago were like, if you don't say the right thing, it says, sorry, I didn't understand that, but it's getting better. That's why I hope this doesn't let me down. So I'm just going to open up Google Assistant on my phone, and I'm going to talk to the train line. And what I want you to look at is, hopefully, right, just how naturally I speak to this thing without putting on my talking to a computer voice. This is going to be a bit more talk to a human voice, so please don't let me down. Talk to the train line. Sure, here's train line. Hi, train line here. How can I help? Hi, I'd like to go and see my daughter in Bristol on Saturday, arriving at about nine o'clock in the morning. What time do I need to leave, please? Which station are you leaving from? London. London. The closest train I can find leaves London Paddington the 7th of April at 7 o'clock arriving at 8.39 to Bristol Temple Meads on platform 15. It takes 1 hour and 39 minutes. To get in a little earlier you could also take the 23.30, 23.40, 6.30, anything Lock else. Up. How much is that ticket please? Tickets are available from £34.30 and pence one way subject to availability. Launch train line app for information about tickets and to make a booking. Can I help you with anything else? No, thanks. You've been a wonderful help. <laughs> See you later, alligator. <laughs> All right. So, going back to my presentation. Uh, but you see, I didn't have to worry about what I said. And honest to God, I was on my way to Birmingham for a talk. Uh, two weeks ago, and it said train cancelled. It was the snow. I was like, oh, shit. And there's a line of humans going to a single desk. And I thought, I'm fucked. I'm never going to get there on time. And I thought, hey, talk to the train line. And it said, go to platform nine, take the train. See your suckers on the train drinking coffee. Away we go. <laughs> so it's really starting to work quite well. This isn't exactly computer vision, but it is enabled by... Um... Now, that's not pumping that out. I switched to a browser, and it's still in my PowerPoint. How do I switch it over? Do you know? No? I could do it on the phone a little bit, or I can explain it. So whilst uh, Mullen does that, um, so this is shoppable video, or if you like, interactive video. It's very compelling, gets a high user rate, and it was done for Ted Baker by a partner of ours called Wirewax. So it's not computer vision, but it is uh, object tracking, okay? And so what we're hopefully gonna see, if we can get the uh, browser to show, no, I don't know why. Oh, did you? Hey, drag it across to the big screen. Drag it, drag it, drag it, keep dragging. Other way? Other way. Swipe right. Swipe right. There you go. All right. And then click on, click on play, Marlon, if you wouldn't mind. Click on play button. All right, here comes the video. It's not got audio. It doesn't really matter. Oh, well, it does. And then um, I'm going to do some shopping for you. All right. So when the lady comes up, see the tags. Get your cursor ready. Oh, this is going to be quite hard. Where's the cursor gone? There. All right. Get your, get your cursor on the film and buy something that you like. Click on the click to shop. Not click to shop. <laughs> there you go. Or oh, that one. It's hard to find it, isn't it, when you're doing it like this. But I hope you'll find one. Click it. Click it. Here you are. I know where they are. Shit, it's hard. I've got no idea what's going on. Oh, God, this is hard to do. Where's the bloody mouse? Swipe right, swipe right. There it is. Right, I'm going to have to bloody do that again. Oh, shit. Uh, hold on. Go there. 
hit the refresh, that's going to go, oh, no, it's going to go back to tedbaker.uk. This is on a massive fail mission right now. Right, what we're going to do, how do you do it? Do you just do back punch, shall I? Let's try that. Sorry, this is going to take longer than I expected. Right, so let's try back. Someone got the back button right. So there we go. Let's try this again. It's weird. But anyway, so here he comes. And I know that he's going to have his... Uh... Whee! All right. And then you do the shop now. And when I do do the shop now, now this film's a couple of years old. And when it was new, when you click the shop now, I promise you, you went straight through to that shirt. When I click it now, it might not. It goes through instead to... Well, it's shirts. But anyway, now there's a couple of ways they do this. You either watch the whole film and it doesn't pause and you just keep clicking and adding to basket or you see the shirt, click, and you go straight to the basket page, all right? And one of the things I've heard, although this might not always be the case, is if people click, click, click and don't pause the film and then they go to the basket, they get to the basket and go, shit, I spent a lot of money and they buy nothing. If you click buy now, they'll buy it. Just worth knowing. Okay, so let's turn that off. How do we get back to the PowerPoint? Well, let's try it, shall we? Um, what do you think? Is it a drag job or? No, I think it's, where is the thingy? I don't know. Oh, 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 oh. oh you're, back. you're back in the room. It's really screwed it up, isn't it? Come on, you can do it, you can do it. Woo! All right, okay. So that was a bit of computer vision. AI. I really love Spotify, okay? Discover Weekly is their most listened to playlist. And I love it. And it's actually improved my life. I used to be a drummer in bands many years ago. I used to buy records till, like crazy. And when Discover Weekly came along, I was like, okay, come on guys, impress me. And it does. Every Monday I get 30 songs. I drag them into separate playlists. I go and see bands live that I'd never even heard of. And bands who back in the day of record companies and Radio One probably would never even come to the forefront. Discover Weekly really is opening up my world of music. Whisk is the Spotify of, of food, all right? Really is, it's gonna, so what Whisk is, it's an intelligent connected food platform. It's a home project that I'm talking about, so we're looking at all the different rooms and when we get to the kitchen, we look at Whisk. So like profile, I start with a, like Spotify rather, I start with a profile. Spotify knows what bands I like, Whisk knows what dishes I like. Because when I start it, I tick that I, yeah, I like the burger and I like the salmon, I like the veg stew, and I teach it what I like. So then, once it knows what I like, it starts suggesting recipes. It's going to talk to my fridge cam, say what's in the fridge, what's the best before dates using computer vision of what's looking in the fridge. It's going to help reduce waste. It's going to suggest recipes based on what's in my fridge. And it's also going to suggest recipes of things I can buy, like Spotify does acts that I might like to listen to. This is going to suggest dishes I might want to cook. And guess what? It's also shoppable. And at a blink, I can compare prices between those four supermarkets. So it, we really are going to get to a stage where the AI that runs the home is going to say to Whisk, FridgeCam, Haley, my health app, hey guys, I'm doing the shop, what should I take into consideration for Simon this week? It's gonna be like the Beauty and the Beast candlestick talking to the clock, basically. Okay, so a couple of final notes. Um, literally two weeks ago, in the kitchen in the future home, I was cooking with a hologram, okay? And I can go pause, slow down 10%, zoom in on the bowl, what's it doing? Walk around it. It can be cook with Jamie Oliver and he's standing at your kitchen counter life-size cooking with you, all right? Or it could be dial up your mum, vroom, she's there, mum, I'm cooking for friends tonight, how do I do this? Don't hold, hold a knife like that, you stupid boy, and all this sort of stuff going on. And she'll be there next week. Or granny, who makes great umpanadas, my Chilean gra m grandmother, um, you can get recordings of her cooking stuff and even when she's passed away, she can still teach her grandchildren how to cook. Ain't that nice? All right. Another thing is I think tech is going to save us from tech. My last note. I wish it wasn't the case. I really do. But I think it's going to happen. But on Mother's Day, about three weeks, three weekends ago, whenever it was, I was at this, uh, I was at Pizza East in Portobello. And honestly, there was a table next to my family table. And the children, my children are 20, 16 and 14. The children at this table were six and four. Both sets of grandparents were there. And so was mum and dad. And the children, six and four, had headphones on, holding iPads, watching Peppa Pig through the entire meal. That's ridiculous, isn't it? So ridiculous. And um, it shouldn't happen. Anyway, 
I was in Vegas in January. It's my last note, excuse me, taking a bit of time. I was in Vegas in January and I met this guy called Alan from Procter & Gamble who was head of innovation. And he said to me, Simon, I did this meeting recently with this guy called Marcus, really nice guy, did the meeting. At the end of the meeting, I took a box of chocolates out of my bag and said, Marcus, please give these chocolates, it's a true story, all right? Give these chocolates to Clara, your PA, because she's been amazing the way she's looked after organizing this meeting today. And he goes, dude, she's an AI. Look up, look up Clara Labs, $399 a month, okay? She does your emailing for you. She can't book flights, or I'm calling it she. She can't do flights or hotels, but that's coming. But she, you CC her on a mail if I'm doing a meeting with Marlin, and then I say, arrange, hi Clara, arrange a meeting for Marlin sometime next week, and it does all the messages for me. I honestly believe we're gonna see an AI, and we're seeing trends towards this already. Your AI is gonna say, Simon, you've been on your computer for two hours now, Turn it off. Your next meeting is not for two hours. It's a beautiful day outside. You've told your watch that you want to do 10,000 steps and you've not done anything. Get the computer off. Get outside. Go for a walk. And I'll tell you what, if you like, there's a shop 3,000 steps away that sells the perfect red wine for the meal we're cooking tonight, thanks to Whisk. Anyway, it shouldn't be necessary, but it's going to happen. I mean, it's up to us whether we engage with it or not. But not, anyway, whole loads of other stories. If you want to hear more about it, please do feel free to come and visit the home. It's home.unruly.co. Um, we normally do brand tours of 10, but um, we don't normally do public tours. But if you're a brand and you're 10 people and you want to come and have a look around it, please feel free to join us. It's been a pleasure chatting with you. Thanks very much. Good night. <laughs>